Jewelers. From Waco, Texas, on the campus of Baylor University, holiday hoops tonight between the Baylor Bears of the hottest conference in America, the Big 12, and the visiting Aggies of New Mexico State from the Western Athletic Conference. And welcome everybody to the Farrell Center and happy holidays. I'm Brad Sham with DePaul Hall of Famer Stephen Howard. This is an interesting matchup. New Mexico State struggling a little bit on the road. All their losses away from home and they are missing four key injured players. More about that later. The real story tonight though, Stephen, is probably Baylor's defense and the way they attack the glass. Well, Brad, Baylor has one of the best zone defenses in the country. They only allow 54 points per game. That's top 11 in the country. They're long, they're athletic, they're mean. They swarm to the basketball and they force you into contested shots or they get steals and then create offense from their defense but rebounding. This is a team that treats every shot as a missed shot. They average 15 offensive rebounds per game. That's top 16 in the country. You win the glass, you win the game. These guys bored with reckless abandon. And even in their practice here in Waco, the Aggies coaches were stressing hitting the glass. And here are the New Mexico State Aggies who are healthy enough to start. Senior DK Eldridge is from Lincoln High School in nearby Dallas with Ian Baker. And then Remy Berry is their star right now. Jonathan Wilkins making his first collegiate start with Pascal Siakam. And then for the Baylor Bears, it'll be Kenny Cherry returning to the starting lineup after having a bad foot. He's the point guard with the newcomer from junior college, Lester Medford, a great acquisition. Royce O'Neal, Rico Gathers, and Jonathan Motley, who had his best game as a collegian last Tuesday against Texas A&M. Scott Drew in his 12th year, the winningest coach in the history of Baylor University, and what a job he's done. And he's used to having him play in March, and so is Marvin Menzies, the eighth-year head coach at New Mexico State. He needs one win to tie for third all time behind a couple of legendary New Mexico State coaches. And Marvin Menzies has had the Aggies in the NCAA tournament the last three years. Kip Kissinger, the referee, puts the ball in the air down to Baylor. Mark Whitehead and Larry Spaulding, the other officials tonight. And Kenny Cherry with that healthy foot back at the point. And that Stephen allows number 11, Lester Medford, to play the two guard, and he's more comfortable there doing this. Hey, you're absolutely right, Brad. He's a combo guard, but as you mentioned, he's more comfortable off the ball shooting, and Kenny Terry, great quarterback for the Baylor Bears. Baylor will play the zone defense. They'll, they'll play different kinds of zones, but this is their bread and butter now. It, it looks like a 1-3-1, but it always flows into a 2-3, and they do an exceptional job of loading to the basketball. So each team misses on its first attempt, and O'Neal to Cherry. And one thing the Baylor coaching staff wants Baylor to do is attack the rim, attack the bigs. New Mexico State is very thin with their front line. You want to get them in foul trouble. Cherry with the first score. And just like the coaches told me while they stressed that they're sure the first couple shots were going to be jumpers by the Baylor Bears, but hey, when you make them, it's all right. 38% three-point shooter, Kenny Cherry. Baylor 8-1, they're unbeaten at home this year. Brad, I want you to pay attention yes, to sir. the deflections that Baylor gets. They're so active in this zone. Like that? Exactly like that. How'd you know he was going to do that like that? That's why he's a Hall of Famer, friends. Rico Gathers got that deflection. A more polished basketball player. His baby hook rebounded. Motley got the rebound, but this ball is going over to New Mexico State. A foul on Royce O'Neal. And you know, Brad, even though they got a foul on this offensive rebound, that just shows how active Baylor Bears are on the offensive glass. Every shot is a missed shot opportunity. Royce O'Neal went over the back, but again, that aggressiveness is what Baylor wants them to have offensively. Baylor showing full court zone pressure early in the game. And Brad, that's not something that they're trying to really steal the ball. They're just trying to take some of the shot clock off, and make you work with a shorter shot clock. You can see that Baylor has held their opponents to 65 or fewer in every game this season. Gathers got in the way of that one. There's a nice reversal by Pascal Siakam, a redshirt freshman from Cameroon. 
Now, when I talk about Baylor offensive rebounding, New Mexico State is just a little bit worse than they are. They're exceptional as well. They get 41% of all available offensive rebounds. That's top 12 in the country, where Baylor is top five. So two exceptional offensive rebounding teams here. Baylor's last game was uh, a week ago last night here against Texas A&M, a former Big 12 and Southwest Conference rival. You did that game, so you tell the people about the offensive rebound edge Baylor had in that. Well, they had 17 offensive rebounds, and A&M as a team had 18 de defensive. So they had one less offensive rebound than A&M had for the whole game, which for me, I've never seen before. And, and looking at this last play, Kenny Cherry, he's a guy that when he gets going, the team feeds off of him. Nice step back into the three. And early on with two early three-point shots, Kenny Cherry has it going for Baylor. And then the senior, D.K. Eldridge, commits the cardinal sin of fouling the three-point shooter. So Cherry with the chance to make it a four-point play, but could not quite do it. One of the best free-throw shooters in the Big 12. That's not something you normally see from Kenny Cherry. Siakam did not want the shot from the left elbow. Just notice how quickly the ball gets inside, and Baylor just swarms to it. On the floor before that ball was, I think before it was tipped in. Yeah, because if it was after, it looked like offensive goal. Yeah, there you go. No foul. The ball was in the cylinder. If you look, watch the basketball right when it comes off the rim, and it has to clear the rim before you can touch it, and it was close, but I do believe that was still on the rim. Good call by the official. So Re Remy Berry, number three, the senior from Paris, France. This is a very international New Mexico State lineup, and they did call a foul on Motley of Baylor. And, and Brad, this is a big lineup that New Mexico State has out there with Remy Berry, Wilkins, and Shiakam out there. First time they've employed this lineup, and they're doing that to really counter affect the big lineup of the Baylor Bears. And if Ian Baker or someone else would knock down a three, they'd like it. Baylor with the rebound. O'Neal. And a good job by Barry of sliding to that glass before Gathers could get the offensive board. And then look at Gathers at the other end. Wow. What? Watch this play in the anticipation by Rico Gathers. Never giving up on the play, anticipating, jumping up and intercepting that. Looking like a, a tight end on that play, didn't he, Brad? You know, you got to stop. He's, he did not play with that physique. And coming from Louisiana, he did not play high school football. He, he wants to be a basketball player. Into Motley. And that, that's a big play for Jonathan Motley, a guy that last game had a really a career game with 22 points, 11 rebounds. The two games prior to that, zero points had fouled out. So an aggressive Motley is a good Motley for the Baylor Bears. Another one of those deflections Stephen was talking about, but the Aggies maintain. This is Eldridge. The thing that you have to do against Baylor, you got to get on the inside of that paint and then go outside, make that defense contract and then kick. And Pascal Siakam was able to do that. 51% from the floor. And Siakam really has been a bright spot for New Mexico State and, and kind of a silver lining of Chile Nafawe being out because you're seeing the progression and the evolution of a young guy that you probably wouldn't have seen if Chile Nafawe was still on the roster. Motley. And Baker fouled in the act of pulling down the rebound. So an early aggressive game on the glass for Baylor in a four-point lead. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by K Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K. And Joseph A. Bank, we fit most everyone. JOSBank.com. 8-4 Baylor over New Mexico State in the early going at the Farrell Center in Waco, Texas. And Lake Washington's defensive beast, Robert Upshaw, leads the undefeated Huskies against slick shooter Buddy Heald and the Sooners in the MGM Showcase. Number 16, Oklahoma. Number 17, Washington, Saturday at 9 Eastern on ESPNU. Part of Holiday Hoops presented by K Jewelers. 
We're talking about two good leagues. Look at the winning percentage by conference. The Big 12 is the hottest conference in the land. And the Pac-12 down at 73%. That's not very down. No, it's not. But to me, the, the biggest indicator of a conference is your weakest link. And you look at the bottom two teams of the Big 12 from 8 through 10. They're 26 and 2, Brad. That's a 93% winning percentage. And that's going to make Big 12 season very interesting. Oh, boy. D.K. Eldridge knocking down that three closes this to a one-point game. And, and that's essential for this New Mexico State Aggie basketball team because Baylor only allows 24% from the three-point line. That's top four in the country. So you got to loosen up the zone and stretch it by knocking down some threes. Two Baylor subs in the lineup. Torian Prince, number 21, and number 24-ish Wainwright. They've got more fresh legs. The Aggies also bring in number 35, Jalen Penny. But they've only got nine healthy players. That one went right through Baker's legs. Cherry, nice to Wainwright, and a block on Penny. Taking a look at his last defensive play by Baylor. Watch the double team out on the perimeter. And that's what I say when this is an angry zone by Baylor. They are chippy. They're not passive. They get in the passing lanes. They trap when they feel like they have an advantage. And that's one of the reasons why this is, to my knowledge and my viewing, the best zone that I've seen all year. Now, here's the problem, and this is what they've got to watch. That turnover on the last trip was their third in eight possessions. And they can't beat Baylor with the numbers that the Aggies have doing that. Well, Brad, not only can you not beat Baylor, but you can't win many basketball games on the road when you're turning over the basketball. You have to take care of those possessions, particularly when you're on the road. Wainwright with the Baylor foul. That's the fourth on the team. And Ian Baker leaves the lineup for New Mexico State, is replaced by number zero, Trayvon Landry from San Antonio. Landry... And Eldridge both have a lot of family members here tonight. Eldridge, who just passed the ball there, he said he's got 23 people coming down from Dallas where he went to Lincoln High School. Eldridge is related to LaMarcus Aldridge of the Portland Trailblazers as well. There's another turnover, a great steal by Prince. And they've seen him grow in this program over the last three years. The Aggie foul is on Eldridge. It's his second. And watch Torian Prince get into the passing lane. You have to ball fake against Baylor. You have to make the defense shift. If you don't, you're going to see plays like this all night long. Torian Prince, really a, a guy that started out as a five. Now he's a three. And that's why he's one of the biggest mismatch nightmares for the Bears. Prince has been a part-time starter. Five times he started, especially when Kenny Cherry was injured, missing that free throw. One thing that Baylor needs to do better when they get into the really, really difficult Big 12 is shoot free throws. It could be their Achilles heel. You're absolutely right. I mean, there's not too many close basketball games that you're going to win when you're not shooting free throws and only shoot 62%. And you've seen multiple misses already in this game. 0 for 3, in fact, for Baylor from the line. And that's one reason their lead is only one. The Aggies hanging in there from Las Cruces. Landry, and number 25, Al Freeman in on him. A good-looking newcomer for Baylor, and there's Prince with another steal. And he'll take it himself. And now, I love the aggressiveness defensively by Torian Prince, but those are two plays that he could have maybe dumped it off to a teammate to get a for-sure fast-break bucket. But again, when the guy's that aggressive and is in the passing lane, it's hard to fault him. Wilkins making his first collegiate start with his first basket of the night. And for the first time tonight, New Mexico State leads. Absolutely, Ryan Wilkins is a redshirt freshman out of Paris, France, and Coach Marvin Menzies wanted that additional size to counteract really the size and the toughness of Baylor. Cherry with a teardrop won't go. Seeing a lot of one-on-one -on -one basketball by Baylor the last three possessions. They need to slow it down a little bit, move the basketball, and get something out of their offense. Landry with the entry. Penny, rattle. Good run for New Mexico State. 
Lane Wright can't get there, but the follow by Motley. And, and at times, you look historically the last three or four years, a missed shot has almost been a play for the Baylor Bears. They just put it up there on the glass, and they go get it if you do not block out and get a defensive rebound. 2-3 zone for Baylor. Siakam. And Prince cleans it off. What an athlete. Cherry now. Seemed like he hurried that shot a little bit to you. Yeah, he did, but a three-point shot in transition is one of the better shots because, as you can see, you get the opportunity for second-chance scoring because nobody has a man in Baylor exceptional on the glass. Wainwright. That's just a bonus. When Ish Wainwright does that's his first three-point basket of the season in four tries. And, and if Ish Wainwright can get consistent from the perimeter, maybe lose about 10 or 15 pounds, he's going to be a tear in the Big 12. Got an extremely effective skill set. He's also got a seven-foot wingspan. Braxton Huggins. A freshman from Bakersfield, California, with a three. And, and again, he's back in front. And, Sorry. And, and again, Brad, hitting the three-point shot against his zone is really the only way to get it to loosen up. Motley. Six early for the freshman red shirt from North Shore High School in Houston. You look historically at Baylor, they've always had some e exceptional bigs. F.A. Udo, Corey Jefferson last year, and they really feel that Jonathan Motley can be that next guy out of Baylor, particularly with the progression that he's made last game with 22 points, 11 rebounds against Texas A&M. Huggins for the Aggie. Here's where Steven was saying before, it looks like a 1-3-1, and look, <laughs> Look at Motley. That's why he's in the lineup. Landry will foul Prince. It'll be the first on Landry. It'll be the fourth on New Mexico State. Jalen Penny gave New Mexico State a lead. Way through the first half in Waco tonight. And New Mexico State giving them a game. The Baylor Bears against a team that has been on the road for a week. School is, is out of session for the holidays uh, on both campuses. And so the Bears have uh, had over a week off. They had finals after their game against Texas A&M last Tuesday. And that's one reason that they had been able to steal the ball five times in the first quarter of the game. Yeah, New Mexico has turned the ball over every third possession, and it's the activity by the Baylor Bears. Great job anticipating. Great job jumping into the passing lane. You have to make the defense shift. You have not seen New Mexico do any ball fakes, not make the defense shift. And when that happens, Torian Prince with two steals. Rico gathers with a steal. You're not making Baylor work on defense. You're really just throwing it to them. And New Mexico State has to find an answer to this active zone. You, you can't score if you don't have the ball. New Mexico State is shooting 50%. Marvin Menzies' team, however, has turned it over five times. You're, you're absolutely right. You have five assists on six made field goals, which is exceptional, but you got five turnovers. And so those are five missed opportunities to score the rock. Torian Prince is 0 for 3 at the line. The team's 0 for 4. And that's a mental thing. It's kind of like a floodgate. And hopefully for Baylor, that's going to end that. But get up on that charity strike, and you have to visualize and focus and just make it happen two-point lead for the Bears you see how they extended the zone and now they have Freeman in Medford Cherry getting a rest Wilkins and the kick ball stays with New Mexico State when Freeman gets the basketball at that high post he either needs to turn face and try to score or quickly reverse the basketball you don't want to hold it because again that allows the defense to shift and set up and you're not able to take advantage of anything oh just a lost handle there by Ian Baker and, and that Brad was caused by that trap kind of got a little frazzled he tried to get out of it knocked it off the foot so you didn't get a steal with the trap but you caused it by that aggressive zone the Baylor employed six turnovers for New Mexico State none for Baylor O'Neal 
Mathers couldn't quite get to the offensive board, so here's Landry. One of the things that New Mexico State has not been able to do is get any fast break buckets and take advantage of the zone before it's able to set up. They get Remy Berry going now. He's their leading scorer. Over 13 a game. Again, four key players injured for New Mexico State. They've only got, they got nine available, and one of them, Matt Taylor, they would like to give a little more time to let an ankle heal before they play New Mexico this weekend. Yeah, Coach Menzi said that he might play him seven or eight minutes if it's a close game. He needs to get some guys uh, a blow, but he would rather hold him back because, as you mentioned, they do have that rivalry game with New Mexico coming up. Six different players have scored for New Mexico State. Baker is not one of them. And Prince from Medford. Uh, you don't really want to do that, do you? He didn't. he didn't really want to do that. Maybe he did. No, that's what he wanted to do. But one of the things that Torian Prince has is shot credibility. He's hitting 60% from the three, so you have to bite on that pump fake. He's able to take advantage of that by attacking the rim. Oh, Neil to Prince! Speaking of attacking the rim. Hey, Brad, not only does he have shot credibility, but he has up ability with that nice lob by Lester Medford on the fast break. Still just a two-point game. New Mexico State actually did a good job of getting down the floor in transition. They couldn't finish. Wilkins, you see him wearing a, a wrap on his right hand. He broke the uh, fourth metacarpal bone in his, uh, in his hand a little while back playing with that now. Freeman. And this to me is one of the one of the signs of why Scott Drew has had this team so successful for so long. When you have two players like Medford, I mean, like, sorry, like Motley and Freeman, who are both redshirt freshmen, and he brings them along and he replaces the four guys who had them in the Sweet 16 last year. Those guys plug in and they've got a couple of years to grow here. Well, you look at the last seven out of nine games, Freeman's had seven plus points. He's led the bench in scoring. So you got a lot of activity from the bench as well. I think that is a tremendous job right there by Matt Taylor, the man we were talking about a little bit ago who they hoped not to play tonight, the redshirt freshman from Toronto. They got several Canadians. And you're seeing one of the problems, Brad, that Baylor's going to face when they get the Big 12 play. They don't have a rim protector, a Corey Jefferson or Isaiah Austin. You have guys that can slide in and take a charge, but a true rim protector, Baylor does not have. Freeman from Charlotte, North Carolina. And Wilkins with the block for the Aggies. Down by only two. Despite their turnovers. You look at this New Mexico team, despite all their injuries, this is still a team that believes that they can win. They only lost at Oral Roberts by three points. Scott Sutton said that, that was the best team that they faced all year long, and they played against some very difficult competition. Barry. Gathers cleans it off for Baylor. What a physical specimen he is. Now Medford. Oh, what a pretty move. Gathers. O'Neal was down. He'd lost his balance. He just got up and found the ball. And the foul on the floor will be called on Remy Berry. I think. It'll be called on New Mexico State. We'll call it on Matt Taylor, his first. He's here in Waco tonight, probably because D.K. Eldridge has got 23 family members from Dallas. And uh, Trayvon Landry's got a bunch of folks up from San Antonio. But New Mexico State down by only two because that man, the gray-haired man we're zooming in on now, eighth-year head coach Marvin Menzies, he knows how to coach a college basketball team. They want to win the game tonight, but college basketball is all about teaching, it's about recruiting, and it's about getting the team ready for March. This guy has done it at New Mexico State, and he knows how to bring along, Stephen, even a really short-handed team. Yeah, a very short-handed team, and, and Marvin Menzies out of UCLA, wherever he's been, has 
really been an exceptional coach. And you look at this basketball team, they've won four out of the five WAC titles, four out of the five NCAA bursts of the last five years. So Marvin Menzies always has his team ready. And even with these injuries, he still believes that this team right here that they have could still win the WAC. All about persistence. Cherry for the Bears. And, 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 one of, and one of the things that they're missing, Brad, is Daniel Mullings, who last year was the WAC Player of the Year. This year was the preseason WAC Player of the Year. And Chili Nafawe, who was a first-team All-WAC Player as well. So with that, you can see how dangerous they could be. But they're not worrying about that. They're playing the team that they have right now, and they're doing exceptionally well. Exactly right. They're hoping Mullings will be back in February and uh, Nafawe uh, sometime next month. Siakam. You talked about him, now you can appreciate him. A big man who can move around in the paint. And really, he's been a hidden gem through all these injuries. And I think if New Mexico State keeps getting that basketball in the Siakam or the bigs and they attack the rim, that is going to be the best operating mode for the Aggies. Medford. Draws the foul, did a good job of penetrating. New Mexico State foul will be on Baker, Baker his first, his first six. and the sixth team Western foul Baker on New Mexico Baker. State. So the good news and bad Shots news for Baylor Bears. is that the next time the Aggies foul, the Bears will be at the foul line <laughs> for one and one. This is a shooting foul. And Medford's a 77% foul shooting. They're, they are going in one free throw. That's one thing, though, that New Mexico State has to watch for. Last game against Oral Roberts, they had three guys foul out, one with four fouls. They ended the game with only five players available to play. So this is not a very deep team with all the injuries afflicted with the Aggies. Let me bury his elbow out and into the defender's chest and that right there. You can't shut off like that. Good call by the officials. And one of the points of emphasis this year, Brad, is not allowing offensive players to dislodge the defender. And once you have legal guarding position, you cannot dislodge the defensive player like Remy Gary just did. More than anything else in this one particular game, I think New Mexico State fears foul trouble. Yeah, well, yes. They just don't have a deep enough bench, and they've got two players with two fouls. Cherry, nice dish. Motley! Well, you saw Motley here last Tuesday. Now he's got eight. What's it do for a young player like that to have a couple of productive games in a row? It's, it's big, but the big thing the coaching staff wants for him is the preparation up to the game because he's a guy that thus far hasn't been dealing with prosperity well. He has a good game. He thinks he's arrived. You have to keep working for it and, and think about where you can be, not where you, where you are right now. Wilkins with an errant pass. Aggies are lucky to hold on to that ball. And again, the activity of this zone. You can't have a, a slow, casual pass against this angry zone. Dang, dang, number 45 came away with that one, and now O'Neal. They call, go, they call that goaltender. Pin the ball to the backboard, I guess. Well, once the bat, it's not easy being a camera guy, but once the basketball gets to the rim, Brad, you can't touch it. And that ball right there was clearly at the rim, which our cameraman can attest to. O'Neal get nice job, Bob. Bobby, all right, Bobby? 22-20, Baylor, O'Neal credited with his first points. Eldridge. Look how close they're so active in that zone. People tend to think of the zone as a passive defense. This is anything but that. It's screened by Wilkins. Oh, look at Dang! A junior transfer from Lee College and a native of Melbourne, Australia. Dang, dang. And it, out of the 2014 class, he was the number four Juco prospect. And he's another guy that another couple of years, adding some weight, getting a little bit more confidence, could be a very, very good big for Baylor. Four-point lead on a six-point run for the Bears. 
Eldridge, look at that trap. Wilkins, boy, Motley really bodying him up well. And there's Deng again. And they got a shot clock violation. Really impressed with how they swarm and trap and switch. The steal by Deng. And the Baylor Bears lead by, set, by four. The six, New Mexico State 20. And Sunday afternoon on ESPNU, scoring threat Wesley Saunders and the dangerous Crimson look for a breakthrough victory against Tony Bennett's undefeated Cavaliers. Harvard takes on number six, Virginia. Sunday at noon on ESPNU, part of Holiday Hoops, presented by Kay Jewelers. And I played against Tony Bennett in college when he played for his dad, Dick Bennett, and Tony employs that same stifling pack defense that his father really almost perfected throughout his coaching career. The Baylor Bears on a six-point run over the last two minutes. And in the last four and a half minutes, that, that zone defense of Scott Drews has held New Mexico State to just one field goal. And they have had turnovers on three of the last four possessions. Look at Baylor's statistics. 11th in the country in scoring defense. They're good guarding from the perimeter. I mean, it's they, they really got the makings of a solid basketball team. And, and really, that's the difference between this team and last year. And one of the reasons why they're so good defensively, you don't have an Isaiah Austin, a, a guy that is projected as a first rounder, or a Corey Jefferson. You have guys that are playing with a chip on their shoulders that were good, but not great. And they're playing collectively as a great team on that defensive side of the court. Royce O'Neal with a three that didn't go. Royce O'Neal really struggled last game, only three points, and that was followed by the previous game. We had 22, so he's a guy that he needs to be aggressive offensively for Baylor. Motley. Motley creating that transition by himself. And a foul on New Mexico State. That's tough luck for them. Baylor not shooting well. Now it's going to be a one and one. So fouls on Eldridge, and that's his third, and that's bad news for New Mexico State. And, 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 and Brad, this is why a transition shot at times is good, because you don't have the rebounders, and you see Dang down the block just going for the glass, and New Mexico State does not have the personnel to block him out. You have a point guard, D.K. Eldridge, trying to block him out. He had the foul. In transition, it's anybody's ball. Dang, dang makes the second Baylor free throw in eight tries. That lead could be a lot bigger. He has come in and given them a tremendous spark on both ends of the floor off the bench. He really has, and that's one thing that the Aggies of New Mexico State do not have a, an X Factor, a spark guy off that bench to give them a lift. Barry, there's the denial again by Cherry. Down to Wilkins. It's a big one from the baseline for Jonathan Wilkins. I, I really like Wilkins' game down on the block. Got a nice face up. Can go over either shoulder in the block. Can protect the rim. I saw you seek him out before the game. I mean, that's a sign of respect from Hall of Fame players. Well, I, I played with a guy in, in France, and I want to know if he knew him, um, which he did. <laughs> did he? Yeah, Philip Ruiri. Baylor just committed its first turnover of the game. What was his name? Philip Uri. Where did you play with him? Paris Saint Germain. He works with the national team in France, and so he knows most of the young guys that come over here to the States. Foul is on Baylor's Kenny Cherry coming up on the K Jewelers halftime report. To give you a preview of the big uh, Connecticut Duke game and upsets. Mississippi State upset by Arkansas State at home. How about that? We'll also have stats and analysis from the first half coming up on the K Jewelers halftime report. 28 22 Baylor. Excited to see that Duke game 9 0. Number two in the country, one of the more efficient offensive and defensive teams. Jabari Parker, who was with Duke last year, just suffered an ACL injury for the Milwaukee Bucks, so I'm sure other hearts and prayers go out to him. Maybe you can see the look on Lester Medford's face as he was called for his first foul. That is the 
sixth team foul. New Mexico State, in case you're wondering, and even if you're not wondering, is a 68% foul shooter as a team. So they're not a lot better than Baylor. Look at that denial by Gathers. Wow. Freeman with a ball fake. And, and again, Brad, the, the most efficient, the most effective basketball is getting your offense from your defense. Rico Gathers, probably the, the shortest of the frontline players out there going over the top, stealing the basketball, and New Mexico just too careless with the ball offensively. Biggest Baylor lead of eight points. Siakam wow. with a great step around move. And that was powerful, and that was quick. That's what you have to do. You get the ball, quick power dribble to the rim and slam it home. Watching the clock, Prince, 19 seconds. New Mexico State making a game of this. But Baylor with the superior athleticism and that defense is going to be fun to watch once the great Big 12 season gets going. Four to shoot. How about that possession by Lester Memphis? He took it all the way to the end. Yeah, and that's, you just mentioned it, Brad. You don't allow New Mexico State to get a shot off. You wait until you milk it to the bottom of the clock and you go to the locker room with some momentum. The score at halftime is Baylor 32, New Mexico State 24. We'll take a quick break and then hand it over to Brendan Fitzgerald and Dino Gaudio with the K Jewelers halftime report. ESPN's Holiday Hoops, presented by K. Jewelers. Halftime at the Farrell Center in Waco, Texas. And the homestanding Baylor Bears lead New Mexico State 32 to 24 at halftime. Brad Sham with DePaul Hall of Famer Stephen Howard. We talked a lot about the defense of Baylor before the game. It has certainly stood up, although New Mexico State, if they could stop turning the ball over, they'd be right in this game. Yeah, you're right. They're shooting just under 50% as a team, so they're right in this game. But as you mentioned, too many turnovers by New Mexico State, which is not allowing them to play. But you're looking at this first half, great draw and kick, kicking it out to Braxton Huggins, able to knock down the three. They need more of that in the second half. And then Pascal Siakam, power down on the paint for the Aggies, but for the Baylor Bears, Toy and Prince active in defense, getting out in the fast break. Rico Gathers going over the top, initiating offense from the defense. Lester Medford taking it all the way to lay it in. And then the big fella, Motley down on the block, doing some damage, repeatedly getting the basketball once he has gotten it. Been very effective, Brad, in this first half. Statistics really interesting that 48% the New Mexico State has shot the highest in a first half against Baylor this season. But look at the turnovers and therefore look at the points in the paint. Yeah, those are lost possessions and really shooting themselves in the foot. Without those lost possessions, they could possibly have a lead in this game. So being careless with the basketball is one reason why Aggies down six in the first half. And uh, as New Mexico State prepares to throw the ball in, one other interesting note. Well, Baylor, as you pointed out earlier, Stephen, fifth in the nation in rebound margin, but the rebounds are even at 17 apiece. New Mexico State's done a nice job hanging in there on the glass with these Baylor Bears. They, they really have. The one thing they haven't been able to do that they're very good at is offensive rebound. Well, only two offensive rebounds. Motley has three. Rico Gathers has two. So they need to get some second chance scoring opportunities on the offensive glass. Now that three by Remy Berry is the third three of the night in five tries for New Mexico State. And Remy Berry's a very capable three-point shooter. She's 71% from distance. Say that again. 71%, now 11 for 15 from distance. And he's a guy, plays as the four, but he's played three in the past for them. Very capable, very versatile big for the Aggies. And you can't get a layup from outside that line. So 71%, that's unbelievable. O'Neal, really good penetration. Baylor has now held eight of its ten opponents to under 25 points in the first half. But the one thing I think was lacking though in that first half, though, was their percentage defense. Normally they hold teams of 36.8. That's top 25 in the country. And as I mentioned, field goals with that last three. New Mexico State shooting around 50% for this game, and 
That's not typical of this Baylor zone. That's the quickest way to attack it, of course. Two threes to start the second half for the Aggies. O'Neal, nice job by Wilkins of denying in the baseline. And again, you have that big front line starting of Wilkins, Siakam, and Remy Berry. Gathers is going to pick up his second foul. And he did look at the look. <laughs> he was not pleased with the call. And you see, nice pass. But yeah, I didn't see a lot of contact on that play. They did a good job, Siakam, of, of selling that offensive charge. In France, do they do that? Do they sell the charge? Oh, the, yeah, they get that from soccer. That's, well, he, he was, he probably was played a little of that. He's a three-point shooter. That's kept New Mexico State in the game. This one's going the Aggies' way. An active, involved crowd on a uh, holiday Wednesday night in Waco. You can hear their reaction. You see a little bit of a, a sparse crowd as opposed to normal here in Waco. And as you alluded to earlier in the game, it is finals week, the students are home. And that's one of the things the coaches were worried about because during finals, emotionally, the players get drained standing up, studying for finals. And so getting this team active and off their heels is, I know, one of the things that the coaching staff wanted after halftime. Yeah, those are just scary going to the glass like that and like this. But before we're going to get a foul on New Mexico State, it's going to be on Eldridge. And that is four fouls on the senior from Dallas. And with 23 family members down here, D.K. Eldridge is going to have to have a seat. And Braxton Huggins come back in. And that's really tough because you have this game circled out of all the games because you're going home. You have your family here and you have four fouls. You don't even have the ability to play in front of your family. Mexico State fighting for the long rebound. Baker. Nice dish. Wilkins from Braxton Huggins. And Brad, you've seen every time New Mexico State has gotten inside the paint, gotten those paint touches, they've made something productive happen because that defense is contracted, and Baylor does not have a rim protector. <laughs> Baylor, Coach Scott Drew said, I think we'll just have a little chit chat about this because uh, this is not supposed to be a two-point game on our home floor going in Waco New Mexico State hanging tough with home standing Baylor on the fringe of the top 25 34 32 the Bears and part of the journey to the tourney Connecticut and Duke it's a rivalry renewed and this year the undefeated Blue Devils are title contenders but you cannot underestimate the defending champion Huskies Connecticut battles fourth ranked Duke. The journey to the tourney presented by Sonic Heart of Holiday Hoops, presented by K Jewelers. Thursday at 8 Eastern, ESPN, the home court of college hoops. And look at Mike Shashevsky's numbers. Wow. Wow. All you say is wow. Yeah. But, you know, UConn has a big to go against Okafor. Mita Bremer's coming off a 14, 40 point, 13 rebound, three block game against Coppin State. So they're going to have their hands full. Be worth watching. So is this one. New Mexico State in the half court defense doing a nice job on big Motley, number 35, Jonathan Motley, the freshman from Houston. Forcing Baylor to play in the half court set. The Aggies are on a 10 2 run going back to the first half. And Cherry has shot in tough luck tonight. Again, the good news and the bad news for Baylor is they're at the line. Baker is the second foul. One thing about Rico Gathers is when the shot goes up, you always have to find him and put a body on him because he treats every shot as a missed shot. Seeing that last second chance scoring opportunity, more chance than not, he's going to come up with it. Motley, a wide open Freeman. Oh, yeah. Wow, did they set that play up well. You know, the out of bounds plays, you have to always be wary of the pin down. And for a guy like Al Freeman, a late signee of the 2012, he originally signed with UCLA, and with the coaching change, they let him out of it. And Scott Drew and Baylor Bears were the beneficiary of that. This foul going against Motley of the Bears. 
his second. Second team foul. And Motley will come to the bench, Troy and Prince back in, but Baylor's got admirable depth. Barry for the Aggies. Pretty sure the next team Baylor plays in here will not be the Aggies. Two Aggies in a row. Wilkins, nice job finding his man outside, but Huggins couldn't make it go. Freeman, whoops, forgot something. Baker, hack on the way up by Royce O'Neill. And you see Kenny Cherry telling Al Freeman, this is a shot that you need to take. He was open, he just knocked down a three. Cherry passed him the ball for him to shoot it. Great job by New Mexico State and Ian Bacon, Ian Baker, getting that fast break scoring opportunity and pushing the envelope, attacking the rim, initiating that contact. Baker, one of the better free throw shooters for New Mexico State, 72%, looking for his first point of the night. Averages eight a game. Boys and girls, that's the first free throw made and attempted by New Mexico State. Harder to catch up when you uh, miss your shots with the clock stop. One thing Baylor's doing is even when they're not shooting in fast break, they're pushing it and forcing the defense of the Aggies to get back, initiating that offense early. Freeman. O'Neal. That's a bad shot. Here's the fourth shot of the possession. The fifth shot went in. Gathers got his hand on it. And, and that's one of the things that Baylor can do. Relentless on the glass. And AM, the Aggies aren't putting a body on anyone. They're just going after the ball. And Baylor's just too athletic for that. That's a clean block. That's an intimidating play. I don't know if he's mad, but he got to stay out of way. Baylor up 39-33 with 15-22 left in the second half. And that last out-of-bounds play, a nice misdirection play where you get the Aggies thinking that you're going into Motley but really, you're going into Freeman. You see a nice pick by Freeman. Motley gets the ball. Freeman's wide open at the three-point line. You never want to let a three-point shooter all alone at the top of the key. And just great job by Baylor executing that play out of a timeout. He's going to be a good player, Al Freeman. Yeah, I think he's going to be huge for them once Big 12 conference season comes along. Having a guy like that coming off the bench, very confident to knock down the three. There are, speaking of threes, Four out of seven for New Mexico State, and four out of ten for Baylor. Huge disparity at the foul line. Huge disparity in the turnover department. And the, one of the reasons that New Mexico State is in this game down six is they have turned the ball over 11 times, and Baylor has only eight points off the 11 turnovers. You're, you're absolutely right. They've given up live ball turnovers, which coaches hate, but they've been able to get back and, and defend those live ball turnovers. Gathers got fouled going to the glass, and the foul is on Barry. Rico Gathers with his sixth offensive rebound New Mexico State only has three as a team, and again, when the ball goes up, someone, like a heat-seeking missile, you have to find Rico Gathers, or he's going to get a hand on the ball, a deflection, keep it alive for Baylor, but he makes things happen on offensive glass. That makes Baylor four of ten at the line. The first foul shot of the second half. Gathers a 58% shooter. Right on cue. And Gathers has a free throw rate, meaning he causes fouls at a very high percentage, top 77 in the country. But as you just mentioned, only shooting 58%. Not good. Another deflection and steal. Freeman. And a 
I mentioned I think he's going to be good. Now, Brad, you remember about five possessions ago, Kenny Cherry kicked it to Freeman. He turned it over. Kenny Cherry told him, look, when we get in the situation, I want you to score. Freeman learned from his mistakes. Good fast break in transition. Knocked down that three in transition. And the two threes by Freeman here in the second half have moved Baylor out to their largest lead at 10 points. 43 to 33 and taking a look at this last play you're going to see the active hands again Kenny Cherry leading the fast break he sees Freeman on his left draws the defense to him fakes to Prince and there's Freeman I messed up once I'm not going to do it again shooters they're going to shoot Freeman is a shooter knocking down the baseline three if uh, if the Baylor Bears are coming to a college arena near you and you like watching basketball you should go see them they're fun yeah again one of the best zones that I've seen this year they called it earlier an amoeba defense which Jerry Tarkanian UNLV running rebels he coined and I think they're more of an angry defense because yep. defenses inherently are passive but you see how far they're extended way past the three-point line this is a defense that they force you to go where they want you to go and then they swarm to the ball and by the same token these Aggies and they get their players back they're showing me a lot of pluck tonight but look at the swarm of the ball. He can't even take a deep breath down in there. And Prince. The, and the other big thing for Baylor, they have four guys that can push it in transition on that play. Point Prince really should have kicked it a little bit earlier, over-penetrated. That call for his first foul, player control. I love the active act on the defensive end. Everybody in Baylor swarming to the basketball. Toy and Prince pushing it, but free throw line. That's when you're taught to stop. Great job by Ian Baker getting front and legal guarding position in front of Tari and Prince and causing that offensive charge. Now a little pressure by Baylor just to slow him down. Baker running the point with Eldridge on the bench in foul trouble. Back in the game now, though, DK Eldridge. And Siakam threw that away, ill-advised. O'Neal! I'll tell you, Brad, if Baylor doesn't track deflections, they should. Because these are the most active in a zone with hands all over the place that I've seen. Very encouraging defensively. 11-1 run for the Bears. Now Barry shooting bad luck, but Penny with the follow. And see, that's what's uncharacteristic about the Baylor zone. Normally, you don't rebound well out of zones, but Baylor, their rebounding percentage, they're plus 17 against the opposing teams with their rebounding percentage. So they do a good job offensively and defensively getting those boards. And normally, you don't rebound well out of the zone because? Just because you're guarding an area, but they get 58% of all available rebounds. That's top five in the country, so regardless of where they are, they get the boards. O'Neal just got one. And there, despite a deflection, Baylor with the ball. Marvin Menzies is complaining, and umpire Larry Spaulding is saying, just sit down, just relax. Marvin's a little frustrated. Medford having trouble, but he finds Freeman. 10-point lead for Baylor. They've led by 12. And again, one of the things that the Aggies haven't done well is just turning the ball over. What a brilliant look by O'Neal to get down there. Then it took Gathers a couple of chances to put it in, but he did get back up on the glass. O'Neal just has a knack. I mean, Gathers has a knack for just getting a hand on the ball and allowing himself to get into the position on that second jump to get the rebound. Steven made the point earlier, this foul is on the floor, it's going against Baylor, and I think it's going against O'Neal, judging by the look on his face. That's the third on Royce O'Neal. And Steven made the point earlier, you can follow it up, but uh, you know, you, you look at guys like Gathers and, and Prince, Wainwright to a little bit of a lesser degree, they had to wait their turn. They, there was Jefferson, there was, there was uh, Austin, well, they benefit from playing against those guys in practice. You're playing against Jefferson, who's in the NBA, Isaiah Austin, who would have been in the NBA, and you're learning from them. And that's been what the bigs of Baylor have all benefited from. Epeudo, Corey Jefferson, 
AC. And yeah, the reason why they've right, been so right, good. AC. Baker. See, Motley adjusted the shot. Penny couldn't slap it back in. Tipped out of bounds. And Landry will check back in for New Mexico State. Ian Baker will come out. Well, point lead for the home standing Bears. I mean, look at New Mexico State. They're shooting a good percentage. They're shooting 50%. It's just the turnovers that are just keeping them from doing what they need to do in this game. And here, the Baylor defense causes a three second violation by New Mexico State. Timeout with a 12 point lead. Use an historic school defensive pace. They're averaging. Given up 53 points a game. The last time a Baylor team gave up 60 or fewer a game was 1958 and 9. Look who was the leading scorer. Carol Dawson was the leading scorer for the Baylor Bears, later was their head coach. And after playing and coaching here in Waco, CD was the general manager for a long time of the Houston Rockets. Recent uh, past president of the Texas Sports Hall of Fame. And it's been a long time since C.D. wore this Baylor uniform. This defense might be the best one since he played. It's really commendable and, and again, different type of personnel, but it's that focus on the defensive side of the court that both of those teams have employed. Cherry. Deng back in, diving to the floor. Brad, you saw out of that timeout, Coach Marvin Menzies getting a little full court pressure for New Mexico State. That's a style that he had employed earlier in the season, but he had to dial it back with all the injuries. Now they're playing more of that kind of methodical plotting offense like they had in years past. But to its core, Menzies is a guy that likes to pressure and likes to speed it up. Now the Aggies with Landry and Eldridge. Zone extended. Eldridge. The entry. Strong move to the hoop for Penny. And Jalen Penny, a redshirt freshman from Toronto, will go to the line. Foul is on Jonathan Motley. Great move by Penny. You see him feeling Motley on his back. Nice move to the baseline where there is no defensive help going up strong. And again, whenever they've gotten the basketball inside, New Mexico State Aggies have made something productive happen. This free throw for Penny. Baylor's on a 13-3 run over the last five and a half minutes. This free throw is really just missed opportunities with turnovers, really just shooting yourself in the foot on each and every turn. And New Mexico State cannot miss their free throw attempts. Deng and Wainwright. Well, one of the problems for New, New Mexico State is with the starting lineup they had, all the subs, with the exception of one, is a freshman. So you're getting guys that aren't really experienced in what you're going to have. You're going to have turnovers. You're going to have missed free throws, lack of concentration. But the other thing you're going to have in the future is an experienced basketball player. In the future. And by the way, the future might be March. Yeah, yeah. And Coach Marvin Menzies is hoping it's a very near future for exactly. those experienced guys. Medford with the basket on the other end to kick the score to 14. 49, 35, now Eldridge. Wainwright. You know, Brad, I don't mind that shot after it's gone side to side inside the paint, but they're just not making the defense shift at all. Really nice dish by Wainwright. And the New Mexico State foul will go on Jalen Fennel. That's his second. That's his here, second. Here we have Ish, Wainwright, Ish with the dish to Motley. And front line so athletic and long. Jonathan Motley finally realizing his potential for the Baylor Bears. But as you mentioned earlier, Ish Wainwright with a 7-1 wingspan. A guy that you're not going to much to when he has the ball. You, you, could, you could see it there because he, he kind of, as he was moving his body into the lane, he kind of reached around with his left hand and just kind of dropped the pass down. His arms and his, his, his stature, even though he's a lot shorter, reminds me of a guy that I played with out of North Carolina, Sam, Sam Perkins, uh -huh. big smooth. Motley missing too. The, 
Bears not doing well at the foul line tonight, and it's going to it's going to haunt them a good chunk of this year if they don't clean it up. 14-point lead for Baylor. Another turnover. 16th for New Mexico State. Their high for the year is 20. Good block by Wilkins. Taylor. Deng is going to get called for this foul. That's going to be his third. One thing New Mexico State has been doing, again, they're getting back in defensive transition. Got the load to the basketball and prevented that fast break scoring opportunity. And then they themselves pushing it, trying to get some easy buckets in transition. And that's the best MO to do against a stifling defense like Baylor. You want to get there before that defense can set up. I said three, it's only two on Dang, but look at the free throws. One out of four for New Mexico State, not good news. One out of five, not good news. And that's one of the things Baylor wanted to do. They wanted to attack the rim. They know that there's a thin, really lack of depth for New Mexico State, and they're doing a good job. Baylor just put in three fresh front court players. Rob O'Neill and Princeton gathers back. Uh-oh. Siakam. Out to Eldridge, and there's Gathers. Cherry to Medford. Really like the leadership and maturity of Lester Medford came from Indian Hills Junior College. Yeah, I think he really benefited when Kenny Cherry was out for those four basketball games because, you know, he really learned that he could lead this team. And, you know, winning four and only losing one game when your point guard, your quarterback is out, I think gave this team a lot of confidence. They're, they're really a balanced team when the two of them are there together. Siakam. Eight points for Pascal Siakam. Yeah, he, he's going to be good, Siakam, in the years to come. And I think this experience he's getting with Chile Nafawe injured is really going to benefit the Aggies down the stretch. Timeout is called by Baylor with 8.28 remaining. Watch big number 43 in the red. Friday, ESPNU brings you coverage of the NCAA Division III Football Championship. Wisconsin Whitewater and Mount Union, Ohio take the field to vibe to become the national champion. NCAA Division III Football Championship presented by Northwestern Mutual. Friday at 7 on ESPNU and watch ESPN. Did I say it was Wisconsin Whitewater and Mount Union? Is that what I said? Look at the eight champions previous uh, and that's where the coach will tell them look guys act like you've been there before and, and they will tell him we have coach, we have been we've been there before check my bio coach we've <laughs> we, been there we've been there the guys before us have been there and the guys before them have been there wow what what two outstanding programs nothing like having the championship game to be an annual rivalry game that's what that looks like yeah about that how about if you can arrange that huh? yeah Looks like they have. It's been three and a half minutes on the clock since New Mexico State scored a field goal. That's helped Baylor open up this lead that was 14. Prince, nice job on the baseline by Wilkins. And, and Brad, you mentioned that low in scoring for New Mexico State. That's where you miss a Daniel Mullen. Wow. Player of the year last year, preseason player of the year this year. A guy that, when there's that low in scoring, when you need a, he's one of the best in the whack in steals, assists, scoring. When you need something, he makes that happen. One of the most exciting and electrifying players in the whack. But again, like we've alluded to all game long, these players still are benefiting, really, from the void that he left being injured right now. The uh, Baylor free throw tab is now 4 of 14. Thank you. 13 point lead for the Bears. See DK Eldridge, a lot of dribbling. You gotta just keep the ball moving. If you're not gonna penetrate the paint, you gotta make the defense shift against his own. There's the entry, goes awry, gathers, came away with it. 
and traveled and the ball will stay with New Mexico State with Baylor up by 13. It's Baylor 50 New Mexico State 37 and Baylor Stephen Howard has begun to reassert the dominance we expected from them on the glass in the second half. They're out rebounding New Mexico State 16 to 8. The other thing is we talked about early in the game that free throws would be something that Baylor would probably want to be cleaning up as the year went along. But tonight's been uncharacteristically bad. They, they uh, their season low is 56 percent, 14 of 25. They're five out of 14 tonight. Well, yeah, and as you mentioned, there's not too many games where you're going to be able to win, particularly when you get in the conference play, shooting a poor percentage from the free throw line. But that dominance defensively, that dominance on the glass, is what's going to help this Baylor team that you don't want to have an Achilles heel like poor free throw shooting. The offensive rebounding for Baylor has been 15 to 6. There's Gathers. Look at that. That's his third foul, but. You adjust the shot the next time down the floor, don't you, when you, when you have a presence like that? Two shots from Seattle. You know, Rico gathers with six steals is the most by a Baylor player since A.J. Walton had six versus Iowa in the 2013 NIT title game. So not only is he your glass eater, but he's proven very adept in the middle of this zone being active. Siakam's ninth point. Double digits, averaging 11 a game for this big freshman from Cameroon where he was in fact a soccer player. You talked about flopping before. You were, we were talking about Wilkins, but Siakam was a soccer player. He's only been playing basketball about three years. And that's one of the reasons why he has exceptional footwork. Soccer, it, it teaches you to have balance on your feet. I mean, that's what you use to score and defend. So most soccer players are able to really acclimate themselves quickly through the footwork of basketball. Motley a little out of control that time. The fans wanted a foul, not sure they're wrong. Scott Drew wanted a foul over there. Yeah, I think Siakam got, got away with a little bit of contact on that block. Scott's either calling for a foul or signaling for an airplane to land, one or the other over there, I'm not sure which. Good job of handling the ball by New Mexico State. Yeah, the Aggies very fortunate because they had the ball in no man's land on that baseline. Baylor had a good trap. Remy Berry able to get out of it. The even scoring opportunity for Shockham on the baseline. They got this down to single digits. Whoops. By Horton Hatch in the egg there. Wilkins came away with it. No shot, no shot. Foul. On Baylor before the shot on you see, Freeman. There you see R Remy Berry and that baseline really going through the double team, which are top. They get the basketball in the middle. And then Shiakam, nice bucket. And then you hear Wilkins got a hand on it and a foot on it. And now New Mexico State pushing it in transition. And you have Baylor being a little careless with the basketball. Last is six minutes of this game. And now you have Baylor committing its 10th foul, and that means that New Mexico State's going to be in the double bonus. They got this thing down to eight points with 6.17 to play. New Mexico State only shooting 68%, another team that isn't great on the charity strike. So this isn't a game I think that's going to be won on the free throw line. It's one that's going to be lost oh, on the great free throw line. Point. Great point. <laughs> Which team will lose the game at the foul line? Wow. Such an odd game. New Mexico State having an exceptional shooting night, especially for a team playing Baylor. They're shooting 45%. Now New Mexico State in the zone. I've seen a lot of one-on-one -on -one by Baylor. But, but just a brilliant pass by Medford. And that's uh, two trips in a row that Motley just couldn't finish. And this is what you do in a zone. You get into the defense, you see three defenders around Medford. That means you've got to have three guys open on your team. He finds Motley on the baseline, whips it around. Great pass, great catch by Motley. And really textbook on how to penetrate and defeat a zone. 
Siakam got called for that foul. Not a lot of contact from him, only his first. And I think this second half for Motley has been a microcosm of uh, exactly what uh, the coaches of, of the Bears talk about with him. They loved, as you pointed out, the game he had against Texas A&M last week. Didn't like the two before it, as you pointed out. And, and they say he's what he is is he's like a freshman because he's a freshman. So when he's good, he's real good, and we just try to get him to be real good all the time. And I think both coaches lament that because they have a lot of freshmen on the roster, but those are those growing pains that you have to experience if you want those players to grow. The Aggies on the offensive glass, and Motley blocked the shot. Great job getting that second chance scoring opportunity. Rico gathers goals for the block. That means there's an offensive rebounder available and getting it down on the block with Penny, but the rim protected by Baylor coming up strong. Two players blocking that shot. Six blocks by the Baylor Bears. Barry the screen. Baker down to Penny. There's another one. A seven steal by Rico Gathers. Marvin Menzies, the rest of his hair is going to turn gray here before he gets out of Waco. I mean, that, and that, these are mostly forced errors. This is the, that's how good the Baylor defense is. Now Barry says, "Well, I can do it too," and then a foul at the other end. I believe it'll be Motley. And that on Motley is his fourth foul. And remember, they're in the double bonus, so it's a shooting foul for New Mexico State. That's one of the things that Baylor really does not have that they have had in years past is great front line depth. Remy Berry. A quiet night for him. Their leading scorer, 13 a game. It's only his sixth point. And not only that, they have held him to six field goal attempts. That's tough for the Aggies. They've missed too many free throws for a team that's trailing. To win on the road, you normally have to be 10 plus points better than the opposition. And you don't do that by one turning the basketball over 17 times. Woo. Two by not getting to the free throw line, and then when you get there, missing free throws. So again, repeatedly shooting themselves in the foot in the Mexico State Aggies all game long. Wilkins called for his second foul. Team foul number eight. Jonathan Wilkins with the foul. It's his second. Team foul number seven. So it's one and one. One and one attempt for Jonathan Motley. For Motley, who is two out of four. And the team is seven of 17 right now. He's made his last three, however. You know, you're seeing the lack of the front line depth with Motley with four fouls and Coach Drew really having to leave him in. Having to do so partly because of New Mexico State's length and uh, athleticism. Baylor's now made their last five free throws. I'll say again, they don't sound like a broken record, but when, uh, when Mexico State gets some of these injured players back, they're going to be a different team, and these guys are getting extra minutes right now. They're going to be better players because of it. It's just a little tough in the interim. Baker got free. Oh, no, he didn't. Motley put it right back in his nostril. And you see in this zone, it's so active, you think you have a wide open shot, but they're so quick and they load through the ball so well. Motley really came from the wings to affect and block that shot. Seven block shots for the Baylor Bears. Up 11, three and a half to play. Medford he likes that spot on the floor. I really like Nefford and the confidence that he got when Penny Cherry was out with that plantar fasciitis injury. Penny made that one go. And a foul on Baylor. 
But no foul. Timeout. Beg your pardon. Timeout, New Mexico State. Watch Medford. Take a look at this last play by Medford, and he does a good job. He gets the basketball in the, in the corner, and nice step back for the three. And that's when you know a player is confident in his stroke. When you fake inside and you jump outside and take a three-point shot on a step back and knock it down. Lake Washington's defensive beast, Robert Upshaw, leads the undefeated Huskies against slick shooter Buddy Heald and the Sooners in the MGM Showcase. It's number 16, Oklahoma, and number 17, Washington, Saturday at 9 Eastern on ESPNU, part of Holiday Hoops, presented by K Jewelers. And this is Holiday Hoops, presented by K Jewelers as well. New Mexico State on a week-long two-game road trip Finishing up in uh, Waco, 57-45 Baylor. The Aggies, because they had finished their finals and school was not in session, they played in Oral Roberts uh, in uh, Tulsa against Oral Roberts over the weekend, but they left last Thursday. They left Las Cruces. And then they went from Tulsa right to Waco. They've been in Waco for three days. Yeah, and in Mexico State, they've had a tough road schedule, losing all of their road games and four of the six road losses have gotten votes in the APN and the USA Today. That's a really nice possession by Baylor. Very patient, moving the ball around over and through the zone and getting it together. Right now, the Aggies of New Mexico State are in a position where they have to track, they have to force the issue, and a patient Baylor offense is going to be able to get easy basket opportunities if they continue to be patient in their offense. Cherry and traffic, even the guards rebound well for Baylor. O'Neal. And that's not the shot that you want. You want to be patient. Well, that's a nice move by Eldridge. Timeout, Aggies. 220 remaining. Throws it back down to 12. DK Eldridge. Second team preseason all whacking. You can see the athleticism in open court. Nice Euro step to create the opening and attacking the rim. And that's what New Mexico State is going to have to do, push it in transition, get their offense from their defense, and try to score before that stifling zone can set up. Would you have called it a Euro step had you never played in Europe? <laughs> it's, it's many Europeans that are in the NBA. I know what I you're know, talking about. I, but know. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm not sure everybody knows what a, what a great, seriously, what a, what a uh, road warrior you. Didn't you write a book about your travels? A little bit, yeah. When? What's that? Well, when, when did you write your book? Well, I, I just, just did this all season. Is it out yet? No, not yet. I'm waiting for you to... Do the forward. All you got to do is ask. <laughs> Cherry to Medford. Two minutes left, and Baylor up 12. And you can be guaranteed that Scott Drew told his Baylor Bears that you need to be patient on offense. You don't need any quick shots. Although we'll take it with 10 seconds left on the shot clock if it's coming directly above the rim. A nice, uh, it's a nice night for Motley. 17 points for him on the heels of the good game he had against Texas A&M. And there's Remy Berry down in the corner. Stephen, it makes you wonder a little bit where he went all night. Well, you got to credit the defense of, of Baylor. I mean, particularly from the three-point line, they normally only allow 24% from the three. That's top four in the country. So the fact that Remy Berry has gotten and made two threes in this game is exceptional. But this zone, it really takes you out for any continuity and rhythm offensively. And you've seen that at times for the Aggies. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by K Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K. And Bass Pro Shop Santa's Wonderland. Time passes. Hold on to Christmas. A minute 36 left in this one in Waco. Baylor 61, New Mexico State 50. And the turnovers 
really have done New Mexico State in. And, and then, especially in the second half, inadequate free throw shooting when they had some, not a ton, but some opportunities to catch up with the clock not running. Minute 36, though, Brad, that's a, a four-possession basketball game that you're still in if you're able to get stops, something that on a consecutive basis the Aggies of New Mexico State have not been able to do. And you can see Coach Marvin Menzies still coaching up this team. He's not giving in, giving up on anything. They're pressing the ball full court. Trying to get a turnover. And I don't think it would be a bad idea to start fouling because Baylor is just not a team that has shown indebtedness at the charity stock. Nine of 19 at the line tonight. It's a great idea. But the one problem for New Mexico State is they don't have the guys on the bench to do that. So yeah. normally that would be a good philosophy, but not when you're so short-handed. Medford. He's, he's knocking them down all over the place. And that's one of the problems for the opposition that go against Baylor is offensively, their offensive rating is pretty good. They're able to knock it down as well as defend you. Barry's going to the line. The foul is on Gathers. His fourth. Sixty-four. New Mexico State fifty, and Lester uh, Medford, or rather, uh, sorry, uh, Jonathan Motley, the young man at whom you're looking, is the leading scorer for Baylor with 14 points, and this would be the second game in a row. And the balance on this team. And one of the reasons they're going to be so good is that they've had seven different players, Stephen Howard, lead them in scoring in their previous eight wins. That goes to my earlier point. One of the reasons why they are so good defensively and offensively is because they're more of a team. You don't have a real star on this team. There's no Isaiah Austin, no Corey Jefferson, there's no Pierre Jackson. You got the collective group that on any given night, anybody at Warsaw O'Neill could step up and, and play big for them. But defensively, they know that it's a team deal, and they all collectively have to come in and play great defense. So I, that's why I think they could really be a dark horse in the Big 12. Yeah, I agree with you. You can see the balance in their scoring. All these guys have made big contributions. Remy Berry at the line for New Mexico State. Two shots coming. Eight points in the half and ten for the game for Berry. But again, the fact, though, that New Mexico State stayed in this game this long with your bench, everyone except one player being a freshman and that other player being a sophomore, playing exceptional against a very good Big 12 basketball team. I would not go to sleep on them in March especially. Mullings, it'll be February before he comes back. Just about tournament time, he'll be ready to go. You know, they, they beat UTEP, who at the time had top 25 votes. Another steal. How about this? Motley and then uh, the reach in by Eldridge. And that is going to disqualify D.K. Eldridge for the rest of the game. D.K. Eldridge with the foul. That's his fifth. Two foul. Nine points for the... Senior from Dallas, hug from his coach. My dad was actually his counselor at Lincoln High School. Yeah, I what you were. We were wondering about that. Yeah. Did you get a scouting report on him from pops? He said it was good. Yeah. It was my good. dad said all the guys from Lincoln High School are good. Right, because he counsels them. Exactly. <laughs> D.K. Eldridge. And Motley finishing off a nice night. This is going to be, this is a staggering number to me. This is going to be the 21st consecutive game that a Big 12 team has won going back to December 6th. No Big 12 team has lost a game in the last 11 days. That's a pretty good lead. They're 53 and 1 at home, so that just shows that we're going to have. And a very exciting Big 12 conference. 
Another team held under 60, and the rebounding and the defense did it for the Baylor Bears tonight. Our final score, Baylor 66, New Mexico State 55. And coming up, it's the 2014 Wendy's High School Heisman Award program. I'm Brad Sham, along with Stephen Howard in Waco. Right now, we're going to get a studio update. Go to Brendan Fitzgerald.